Hello, everybody. Don't go away. I'm here. Here I am. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to ZTV Live. I'm Susan Mulligan Fleischman. Today's Tuesday, August 4th, and I'm so happy to have you here tonight. I love starting off with an operator error. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm very excited for tonight's show. We have a double header tonight. First, we have on Nicole Scott Howe and Sandra Dalal. Uh, Nicole Scott Howe owns the Redesign in a Day shop in Holland Hall Shopping Center, and Sandra Dalal is an artist uh, with her Brown Fox pot pottery business. Um, and they've com uh, combined forces, and they're selling masks with a mission, supporting Black Lives Matter. We'll be talking to them in just a couple of minutes. Then we also have on Martha Carucci tonight. She's the executive director of the National Breast Center Foundation, and she's going to join us tonight to talk about their upcoming fundraiser at the end of August, and also she'll give us a little bit more information about um, the October walk to breast cancer which is their primary fundraiser every year explaining also a little bit about the uh, situation that's going on with the foundation and the work that they do but before that um, we have just a couple of words from our sponsors this episode of ZTV live is brought to you by MB bakery Mary Beth's impeccably designed artisan goodies are now available on the go you know you can trust a bakery that buys its butter by the ton Visit mbbakeryonthego.com. And by Delia's on Swamp Fox Road near the AMC Hoffman Movie Theaters. Delia's offers indoor and outdoor dining plus carryout and specializes in brick oven pizza and Mediterranean cuisine. Visit deliasbrickoven.com. And by Dishes of India in the Bellevue Shopping Center in Alexandria. Dishes of India is open every day from for lunch from 11.30 to 2, and dinner hours are 4 to 8.30. Check their website for daily specials and your Indian favorites. Visit DishesOfIndia.com. If you'd like to become a sponsor of ZTV Live, please let us know. Send us an email at ads at thezebrapress.com. That's ads at thezebrapress.com. And we have a new feature tonight. We're starting where we have a uh, something called the Where Is It uh, contest, uh, contest. And um, we are gonna have people, we're gonna show a picture and somewhere in Alexandria, and we want you to guess where it is. And the prize giveaway for tonight's correct answer, the first correct answer is these really awesome Zebra earbuds with a lav mic which if you've ever been on ZTV Live, you know you need. But uh, these come really in handy and they're super fun. And who wouldn't want zebra earbuds? So <laughs> just a couple of rules for the Where Is It uh, contest. Um, don't put your guesses in the comments. Go ahead and send a private message to the Zebra Facebook page. And then the first one with the correct answer will, um, will win. Uh, also, um, this is uh, exclu uh, This is not for Zebra employee and staff employees or their families. This is just for, for our viewing public to win these great earbuds. So um, I am going to show you the photo now. Hang on, because I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. There's the photo. So anybody who knows where it is, remember, don't don't send type it in the comments. Just go ahead and send us a message on our Zebra Facebook page. Uh, so we're gonna get straight to the show tonight because we have such a, such a full show. So I'm gonna bring on both sets of guests. Uh, so hello and welcome everybody. So now we have Sandra and Nicole are here and Martha is here. Hi everybody. Uh, hey Hi there. Hi. Thank, thank you both. I thank all three of you so much for coming on and talking uh, to us and our viewers on ZTV Live tonight. We already have a couple of people saying hello. Gwen Gibbs Quorum said hello. Chris Irwin and Sharon Timmons, who of course I know as well, said hello. So it's so great to hear from everybody throughout the show tonight as uh, Sandra and Nicole are speaking and also Martha, if you have any questions or you wanna just say hello or um, anything, please go ahead and, and send us comments. Just not the answer to the where is it photo question, but any other comments, we'd love to hear from you and, and I can let I can let these uh, these gals know that you guys are checking in. Tracy Burbridge Dunn just said, woohoo, Martha Carucci. So <laughs> um, anyway, I think we're gonna start with um, Nicole and Sandra. So um, why don't you guys uh, give, tell us a little bit about your um, Masks with a Mission? Well, 
it all started, I've known Nicole for probably 20, 25 years, forever, um, introduced to us by uh, Gwen Corum. Uh, <laughs> hi, Gwen. Hey, Gwen. Uh, um, and so she sells my pottery. You know, it's just a great synergy that we have together. So when COVID hits and we're all at home, we're all home making masks. And then the George Floyd incident happened and the whole world is really awakened to the Black Lives Matter movement. And I thought, well, what can I do? And it just kind of came to me in the night, one night, and I asked Nicole if she would sell the masks. And she said, absolutely. So I just had this huge stash of fabric. I make the masks, put together a little packaging for them. She came up with the wonderful tagline of masks with a mission, which I love. And uh, now we just can't keep them in stock. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's that that's great. Can you do you have the mask there? Do you have one to show? Yes, I do. This this is one of them, and the the pattern for this came from um, a woman who runs a company called Orange Dot Quilting, and a hospital administrator asked her to design one, and it has the nose guard in it. It has a thing for over your mouth, under your chin, and then the ear things that fit, and they're really comfortable, and I always feel really safe comfortable and safe and they fit nicely and after a while I forget I have it on oh that's so, fantastic that and there's really many many designs this is just one right yeah it's whatever fabric I had uh-huh and I do some him. of them do some of them also have uh, adjustable straps yes this is actually a really new one it doesn't have the adjustable thing but there's a little bead on them now yeah. mm -hmm. that they are adjustable um it's black on the black ones and, and white. Nicole yeah. has one with the white yeah. little adjustables. Yep. Those, are, those are really, that really comes in handy to have that adjustable. But it's like the third iteration of the mask that I made and it takes longer to make, but I just love it. It's comfortable, it looks nice. You can throw it in the washer and dryer to get them clean. So they're easy to, uh, you can iron if you want. You don't yeah. have to. Yeah. But it's just, you know. After wearing it all day, all the all the wrinkles might come out naturally after wearing it all day anyway. <laughs> um, and how has it been uh, received in the in the community? Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, we have a display here at the store. We also, Sandra and I both have Instagram, so we'll post on Instagram when they're back in stock. And initially, I think Sandra did maybe, I don't know, 20, and they were gone within like a week. People, are, wow. people, people buy multiple of them. Um, I just had a nurse come in today looking for more because she um, has some friends in the, in the medical industry that they love them. So um, it's been amazing. It's been an yeah. amazing response. Yes. That, that's, that's, really, that's really great to hear. And they're $10 each, right? They're $10 each and 100% of the proceeds are going to a Black Lives Matter social justice cause, which we, um, Sandra is involved in bail reform. Not that she's ever used bail. <laughs> I support bail reform. She supports bail reform, which she's been doing for a while. Um, but a lot of organizations have sprung up, you know, in the last few months. But we wanted to do something that we felt has been around for a while, a cause that um, will continue even after the, you know, the anger and the, you know, everything dies down. Something that's been around. So we're looking at the um, legal legal aid justice center which is based out of Charlottesville. It's been around since, I think, 1967. Um, it has offices in, obviously, Charlottesville, um, uh, Richmond, and then there's one here in Falls Church. And it's a comprehensive organization. Do you have, and I didn't ask you this before, and I apologize for that, but do you have the, do you have the website if people want to, um, you know, look into it? Or, and I was also going to ask if people have enough masks or, I mean, they can make donations to this organization separately of, of, of support, of buying one of the masks, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so far we have sold 72 masks, so that's $720. That's um, once, I know, we are. We're, we're pretty happy about that. Once we get to $1,000, then we will um, check in with the people at the um, Legal Aid uh, Defense Justice um, and kind of determine the best place for them, especially um, in light of the new um, 
that Congress did not pass the new bill for this extra $600. They're finding that obviously people, you know, have limited incomes all, you know, before, and now it's exacerbated the situation also with the evictions. So there's, again, this organization is multifaceted, which is what we really like. It's not just racial injustice policing, it's education, it's children. Um, it's also now COVID as a part of it as well. Wow, yeah, and the need and the need is just so great. And um, can you give me the, um, the website address, Nicole? Oh, sure. It's um, justice, the number four, and then all. So justiceforall.org. Terrific. Justiceforall.org. Okay, I just I just added it into the comments for people for okay. people to take a look at. Um, and the so, name, the actual name of the of the group is the Legal Aid Justice Center. The Legal Aid Justice Center. Great. Um, I'm typing so I can't talk at the same time. <laughs> Uh, the Legal Aid Justice Center, great. Well, um, that is really, um, really helpful. And how great of them to have such a umbrella approach to, you know, because the need really is so great. And, um, you know, you say it started in 1967, which was another, um, you know, turbulent, very turbulent time. So um, the fact that they've lasted this long is, um, great and also sad <laughs> but really Absolutely. But, but, but 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 great but great that they're there and um and uh is there anything else that you um want uh, you know viewers to take away from this or any other messages or any other one ways they can help we, one of the things we love about the masks and i and i just love to think about it is how the mask is such a it's almost like not a double bottom line but a triple bottom line you're getting people to wear a mask to protect themselves and their family during COVID. You're um, supporting um, this shop. More people come in here because what they're promoting. So it's promoting um, a local business and that we are giving the money to organizations that more now more than ever really need our support. The person buying the masks gets a mask and they're also supporting these amazing organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it no, really it, works. Yeah, it really things. does. It really does. And speaking of your shop, your your, your shop looks um, quite uh, photogenic as always, Nicole. Um, and uh, do you sell some of your pottery in, in the shop as well, Sandra? Yes, she's been so good and has supported me um, so much. And one of the things that Nicole and I came up with, it's a tr true collaboration on so many <laughs> levels, but um, you can see this little house. It's yeah. um, an ornament, and it has our zip code on it, 22308. And for some reason, people love our 22308 zip code. I also do 22306, but they're like ornaments, or you can you know, just have it in your home. And this is a collaboration, and it's another thing. She can't keep them in stock. I can't make them fast enough. <laughs> oh, that's and, great. Um, but it's just a little touch of our home. And again, yeah. it supports a local business and a local artist. Because when I sell more pottery, I can just buy more clay. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. And you can make more. And you also do two, two, three, one, four. I'm going to show some other pictures of some of your. Um, yes. Uh, here's the here are the mugs with the two, two, three, one, four. Those cute coffee mugs. And, and where did you say that you sell these at a um, farmers market? Me, right. Um, I have a friend who has a shop who has a booth at the farmers market in Old Town. Yeah. And I get to have it a couple times a year. I was there this past Saturday. So yeah. I make a mug just for 22314, and I make the same little house or a similar one. It looks more like a brick row house with the 22314. Again, in Old Town, we love 22314. Oh, absolutely. Um, this is in Old Town, and we yeah. love Old Town. <laughs> and I'm cycling through your, your spiral dish and those, those little pictures. And then also, Nicole, you sell these cute little candles and napkins in here. Um, and are those are, are those soy candles that you have? Yes, they are soy candles by Oh So Soy. Oh Soy Goodness, um, Lainey, she, a mom of two, she lives in uh, Delray, so she makes them and they are amazing. I mean, wow. they smell so good and yeah, we can't keep those in stock either, so, oh, which bet. is great, which is really good. I mean, I love, part of the plan of when I wanted to open a store, I really wanted to find other artisans, local, especially women that I could support and we could collaborate and create and 
you know, showcase their talents because they are so talented. So um, Lainey is one. We also have soaps that are done by um, Julie Life, um, and she's also in Delray. We've got jewelry from a local artist who was a Fort Hunt High Fort Hunt High? Yeah, Fort Hunt High class, I think, of 1973. Mm -hmm. um, so she's making jewelry. So yeah, it's like Sandra said, it's a total collaboration, which is exciting. Yeah, and it really is. Um, and how uh, lovely to have the uh, local, you know, as you said, supporting those small small businesses, local businesses, and so they can sell their things and run out and make more <laughs> to sell. Right, right. You know, the people that are doing it locally are doing it for the love of what they what they're do, do, doing. I mean, you know, it's not they're not doing it so they can go buy a yacht. You know, when it when, <laughs> when it's all done. So um, exactly, I yeah. totally agree. And, and and like Sandra said, it's so it's so great for me as a um, a business person to be able to contact directly. Um, you know, Sandra or Lainey or, you know, whomever and to say, hey, God, hey, I need more X, Y, Z. And, it, you know, if they have it, they can just bring it right over versus me having to call it's this big operation and wait two weeks and, you know, the cost, etc. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's working out so far so good. Yeah. It's been really a, a good right. partnership, a good, yeah. good collaboration. Yeah, it, it is. sure is. And, and the Mass with the Mission just really, what a natural evolution uh, to come from your collaboration as a, a, a shop owner and supplier <laughs> to, um, hey, here's, let's, let's uh, fill a need and, um, and, uh, and then some, and uh, you know, right. answer, answer, answer the call and fill a need at the same time. So thank you so much for, for what you guys are doing. Um, right, and I, I wanna add to when Sandra contacted me about it, I was searching for a way as a person of color to give back to the Black Lives Matter or the social justice as well. I, um, you know, Sandra and I have talked, I, I was at the time, it was all so fresh with the George Floyd, um, and I was struggling with how I could help, help with the situation. So when Sandra approached me about it, I was like, that's exactly what I feel like I could do. Because for so long, I felt like, um, you know, prior to the George Floyd incident, I felt like our, our Congress people, our lawmakers would, you know, help the whole cause of, you know, police injustice and that whole thing. And after George Floyd, I felt like that was not gonna happen. And I felt like each individual needs to do their part. And if we all do a part, then that becomes a big thing. And so, um, you know, for me, this was a really, uh, obviously a, a, a being a person of color and having children of color, um, for me, it was a really, really important thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much um, for your candor and for, for everything that you're doing. And I think um, that message of every little bit really helps. And I think that now as a white person, seeing the reaction of everybody, as it, it is uh, somewhat not, it, it's just been an eye opener to see the whole world recognizing this is a moment. Everybody keeps saying, oh yeah, it needs to be a moment. It needs to be a moment. But I think this is finally the moment. And so um, you guys are certainly doing your part to help. So thank you. Uh, really, really appreciate that and, and supporting that. And again, viewers out there, uh, Nicole's shop is in the Holland Hall Shopping Center um, in the uh, southern uh, uh, parking lot, um, right around the corner from the, from the beauty salon and right next door to the barber shop. So um, you can find all those cute little things in there and definitely pick up some of the masks with a mission and support support that cause so thank you guys for coming on i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you guys on here um you want to stick around while i bring martha on okay definitely thank you okay thank, thank you, you again so much all right martha you're coming on in one okay you're on hi martha <laughs> hey everybody great to see you thank you so much for being here it's great to see you too so you're a busy girl these days yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about about what's going on with with uh, the National Breast Center Foundation, of which you're the executive director? Yeah, sure, Susan. Thanks for having me on, and um, Nicole and Sandra. I loved loved what you shared with your segment, and I love your store, Nicole. Um, Nicole and I go way back to the tennis court uh, years and years ago. Sandra and I go way back to this morning when we first <laughs> <laughs> call. 
But I just love what you guys are doing together and your store is beautiful. It's been such a gift to our little area here because um, I love to run in there and grab a gift and they're always very appreciated and well received. Um, so I really am glad that you guys are there and I love what you're doing together. Uh, I was saying to Susan earlier that it really does tie in well with what our foundation mission is. Um, the National Breast Center Foundation really exists to ensure that all women have access to the best care possible for breast cancer for treatment and screening. Um, and it's something that, believe it or not, you know, our area has one of the highest rates of breast cancer in the country and some of the highest incidences of late stage breast cancer in the country as well. Um, so people don't realize that our area, you know, much of that comes from DC wards five and six, but also Alexandria and Arlington. Um, so it's a very, very, um, you know, the statistics are scary. And right now with COVID, um, the longer I found out a really interesting a uh, statistic from my boss yesterday, um, for every month that the United States puts off screening mammograms because of COVID, we risk missing approximately 30,000 breast cancer diagnoses. Um, so I just saw in the news a little bit earlier tonight a piece about um, health issues and how many people are not doing preventative screenings for all kinds of cancers, but they talk predominantly about breast cancer. Um, you know, because you couldn't go into the hospitals, you couldn't go into facilities. Now they're starting to open up. And, um, you know, one of the groups that we work very closely with and we have an amazing partnership with here in, in our community is a group called Nueva Vida. And they have helped the Latino community in our area for over 20 years with cancer. Um, and we are so grateful for our partnership with them their team is just unbelievable. Um, they, I can't even tell you how far above and beyond these women go to make sure that their clients get seen and treated for breast cancer. Um, so uh, Nueva Vida usually has a wait list of about 30 women who are waiting for screening mammograms. That wait list right now is up to over 300 women in the DC, Maryland, and Virginia area. So I'm really excited to announce that we have partnered um, and created a little uh, coalition with some other groups in Alexandria, um, including uh, the Bola Lawson Fund and the Alexandria Commission for Women and working with them and our foundation and Nueva Vida to get those women off the wait list as soon as possible because as everyone knows the longer you delay the you know greater the risk that you miss an early detection which can make a huge difference uh, in a successful outcome um, and the other thing is, you know, our, we're grateful for our relationship with Nueva Vida, but, you know, to get to what we were talking about earlier with the Black Lives Matter movement and um, minorities and how they're treated with breast cancer, with health issues in general, um, you know, the statistics are even much, much worse for African-American women. Um, African-American women are diagnosed at a younger age, usually with much more aggressive types of breast cancer, and um, they actually have a 40% higher mortality rate. Uh, so that's really, really scary. And our foundation has a three-pronged mission. It's education, access, and technology. So for the access piece, you know, many of these women in our area don't have insurance. They work multiple jobs, but they don't have the financial means to go and get screened for um, if they find a lump on their breast or if they feel there's something wrong or if they know that they have a significant family history, um, they just they just don't have the, the means to do it. And we're here to say, you know, we're here, we're local, we can help any woman, there's no geographic barrier. Um, so we've been, as I said, very blessed with this relationship with Nueva Vida. Um, and also I was just um, invited to join the executive committee on Tiger Lily's foundation, um, alliance for looking at disparities among minorities with metastatic breast cancer. That's something that came out of a conference I attended in San Antonio. Um, really looking, it was very eye-opening for me uh, just to hear how crazy the disparities are based on skin color. And, you know, um, 
we're doing our best to address it to make sure that underserved communities have access to care as everyone else should. So um, that's a little bit of a, of a transition. And I know you wanted to get into some of the events, but um, I wanted to see if you had any other questions first. Uh, no, we don't. We don't have any questions here. But congratulations, Martha, on that appointment. Um, they're uh, lucky to have you, and uh, I know you're going to really uh, bring such a huge benefit to all the work that they're doing, and um, and about the coalition that you've been building and, and forming. And this is, it seems like the uh, time is right to kind of bring everybody together right now. Um, it you know really honestly, and all this mess that is COVID. If there's any silver lining. It seems to be all of these creative uh, answers that people are coming up with to to solve problems that were, you know, just there, what we're still there. So, um, uh, you know, I and Astrid uh, Jimenez um, loves Martha Carucci and the, uh, the National Breast Center Foundation, and she added also that disparities exist not only in breast cancer but also in, in the COVID deaths. So, it's it's so important to get the health and to 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 end that disparity in care for sure. And I love Astrid Jimenez. She is the executive director of Nueva Vida. She is an amazing, amazing woman. Um, and she's right. The disparities are go are being seen very clearly with COVID right now, too. Um, you know, Nueva Vida shared with me that, um, you know, they've gone to bring food to many of their clients. And they had a family, you know, the woman opened the door with many uh, young children. And the woman cried because they hadn't had food in a week. So... The fact that people are, you know, going without food, it just shows you that the last thing a woman is going to do is go and get a mammogram or something if she has to incur any kind of cost because her first priority is to take care of her children and, and feed them. So, you know, Nueva Vida is doing amazing work, Tiger Lily, other organizations. Um, I am so grateful that we've been able to partner with some of these these groups. Yeah, that's, boy, that's a tough situation. It's really tough. I'm so glad that, um, uh, what can people do to help you, Martha? So, um, you know, you mentioned a couple of events that are coming up, and it's been very difficult with COVID for nonprofits in the area and everywhere to raise money um, as so many people are losing their jobs. But along with that, because so many people are losing their jobs and insurance um, coverage, many more women need our help. Uh, so we have to continue to raise much needed funds. So every, this will be in, it was supposed to be the fifth year of our Swing to Bust Cancer golf tournament. It was supposed to be held in May and we've pushed it off to August. Uh, and thanks to some, some great women that I met um, because we were the featured nonprofit in this year's Scout Guide. Uh, the Scout Guide put together a committee of small businesses and women locally who might be interested in helping the foundation. And uh, two of the women are tennis players and said, hey, can you add a Swing to Bust Cancer tennis tournament to the golf? And I said, you know, why not? I I'll be playing golf, uh, but if you want to do the tennis, sorry, guys, because Susan and Nicole are both my tennis playing <laughs> friends. <laughs> and I wanted yes. to say that. I hope that Mary Wadland is not watching right now. I hope that she is out on the practice range somewhere because she's on my foursome for the tournament. Uh, not sure if I'm supposed to say that, but uh, the Zebra publisher has very high expectations for that tournament. Yes, um, yeah. She so better the deliver. <laughs> she better deliver. So we're adding this year um, – the tennis component. And Swing to Bust Cancer is something we hold every year to raise money and awareness to make people in the area, you know, give them a, a fun day and give them a chance to learn a little bit more about the foundation. Um, we I'm, struggle. I'm throwing a few pictures up from last year, Martha, just while you're talking. I'm showing some pictures from last year. Great, because people can have a break from looking at my face and they'll appreciate <laughs> that. Um, so, well, you're in the uh, pictures too, so, but keep uh, going. Sorry. <laughs> this year, you know, we really struggled with can we hold the event and can we hold it safely? And the holding it safely is our number one priority. Um, but as I said, the need is so great for us to raise funds to be able to help this growing list of women who need help uh, with screening and treatment that we decided to go ahead with it, but to do it in a way that, you know, is a 
safe outdoor event, um, a fun day where people can come out. Every player gift bag will have a mask that is being hand sewn by a patient uh, with the breast cancer ribbon. So we're really grateful to her for that. Um, we will have hand sanitizer in every bag. They'll already be placed on the carts and by the tennis courts. Um, we will, you, you know, it's one person per golf cart unless you are living in the same house or unless you sign a waiver that you agree to ride with someone. The staff has been very um, accommodating about, you know, telling us how they're abiding by the rules. And, you know, we feel that very strongly that we can put on an event at a safe social distance outside. People can be very careful uh, and we can raise money for a really important cause. So um, that event is October. August 31st, and it's at Bellhaven Country Club. I'm grateful to you and Nicole both for signing up to play. Grateful to Mary for joining in my foursome. Um, and a lot of people have signed up. There's still room for more. Uh, you can go on swingtobustcancer.org to find out more about it, how to sponsor, how to register, and how to donate if you you can't play. Um and I did want to say that I did talk to my boss, uh, Dr. David Weintritt, yesterday. He is the doctor here, the breast surgeon who started the foundation. Um, I feel very blessed to work for him. Um, but we talked yesterday and we decided that we will not hold any type of reception or award ceremony following play uh, because we just don't think there's a way to do that safely enough. Um, so I, I hope all the players will understand, you know, we'll make sure that they get enough drinks and food throughout the event. But safety has to be our priority with this event. So absolutely. I think all the players will understand. I, I mean, it's it's a. Uh... You know, it would be one thing. I mean, when you started planning it, the numbers were, you know, really looking better. But in the last couple of weeks, it's it's really exactly. unfortunately been a super yo-yo. So it, it's uh, exactly. it's got to be a little it's got to be a little a little uh, tough to tough to plan on something like that. On a lighter note, Astrid just said that Martha Carucci is training with Martina Navratilova for the tennis match. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> figure out how I could make it to both events because I'm both a tennis player and a golfer. So this is really hard for me that they're going on at the same time. Well, you'll just have to do it twice a year. Uh, there you go. And I'll have to leave it to Nicole and you for, for That's sweeping. Right. We'll, 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 we'll carry We'll try to hang in there for you. So no promises though, but it should be a fun event. I for one am thrilled that tennis was added um, and to uh, be able to take part in, in, in the event. So, uh, you know what a good cause you know my mother had breast cancer she was a breast cancer survivor but um it's just so prevalent you know and everybody um everybody knows somebody who's who's had it i mean so many women our age have you know have already had it my niece had it so um thank you for all all of the work that you're doing on it and you have some other another uh fundraiser that you wanted to talk about right yes um, and walk, many october walk yes um the walk to bust cancer uh, this many of you have probably seen the yard signs all around our area every year in the fall. Uh, you see people walking around with these T-shirts on, walk to bust cancer. Um, and uh, it's our biggest event of the year. It's our biggest fundraiser. Uh, this will be the fifth year of the event, and we've held it every year at Fort Hunt Park. It started out with a few hundred people raising, you know, a decent amount of money. And last year we had over 700 people, and we raised about $106,000 that all go straight to the women who need our help in our community. Um, but, you know, we cannot have an event with 700 people at Fort Hunt Park. So this year's walk um, is going to be virtual, but I'm really, really excited about some of the ideas that um, we've come up with, not just me, but I've been blessed with an incredible committee of volunteers who've helped me with the walk. I have a couple of interns who are these bright young women who are hardworking and way better at social media than I am. And um, they've come up with some great ideas. So the plan is that the official date of the walk will be October 25th. Um, and what we're going to do is 
a social media channel that day. So it may be either Facebook Live or Zoom or a combination of things. Someone's going to organize that for us. But for those of you who have been to the walk before, you know that we have, we start the walk with the mindful meditation. Um, Gina White is the mindful junkie and she does an amazing job getting everyone settled and grounded. Then we hear from Dr. Weintritt and sometimes a patient. We're going to be broadcasting that out to people. Um, but meanwhile, what we're asking for is throughout the month of October, we're asking for people to get together with family and friends, create and organize a little walk in their neighborhood, their community, wherever, um, register on Walk to Bus Cancer as you, you would normally do. We are going to have t-shirts and we're going to try to get them out to people early um, so that we can get a lot of photos and Facebook live clips from different areas and people holding the walk um, with their shirts on and really have a day of a social media you know, virtual event, but the event will actually be going on throughout the entire month of October with people holding these smaller walks in their neighborhoods with families. You know, I think the event is so important for us. Um, when Dr. Weintritt told me when I first came on board with the foundation, which was a little over five years ago, um, you know, he said it was so important for his patients who were survivors to have a day of celebration after all they'd been through with chemo and radiation and treatment. Um, and not only that, it's so important for the women who are currently battling it to feel the love and support of their friends and their community and their neighbors and the survivors and the women who went before them. So if you haven't been, it's, it's a very emotional day, but um, really such positive energy and just uh, a beautiful day. So we're trying to figure out, you know, the best way to carry that on in a way that celebrates survivorship, supports women who are going through it, and raises money um, for for a really important cause. Um, so with these virtual walks, another thing that we're trying to do is in the past, <laughs> I just saw Mary Wadlin's <laughs> comment. <I know. laughs> um, in the past, you know, we've gone out to the community and asked for businesses and restaurants and, and gyms and stuff to support us. Um, and this year, being very mindful that so many businesses uh, are struggling because of COVID, we just don't want to go out and say like, hey, you know, can you sponsor the Walk to Bus Cancer? What we want to do instead is give back to the community and really figure out a way to partner with the businesses in our community and say, hey, thank you for five years of support of the Walk to Bus Cancer or one year or two years, or if this is your first year. Um, you know, many people have been touched by breast cancer and they want to support what we're trying to do or they want to sponsor because they have a family member or a good friend who battled it or was lost to it. Uh, so what we're thinking this year is to go to the community that supported us for these last several years and say, how can we also help you? How can we drive traffic to your business, to your restaurant, um, and to your gym, you know, to your exercise studio? So we've come up with some really great ideas where if you've been to the walk, and I don't know, Susan, if you could show a picture, there's the painted angel wings um, that a lot of people at the walk every year take their picture in front of the angel wings. And those were painted um, by a really amazing woman, Mary Edwards, and her husband, Jason, and their two children, Dakota and Hunter. Um, they painted and built the wall and um, the wings, and every year it's up, and we have a board next to it for people to write the names of who they're walking in memory of or in honor of. Um, so what we would like to do, since these are huge boards, is we're going to get probably two giant replicas of cutouts of the wings. We're going to have one in Old Town and one maybe in Delray. They would move to different businesses at different times, and we would put out on social media, hey, uh, you know, today the angel wings are going to be in front of redesign in a day. Um, go there, take your picture in front of the wings, hashtag the store, hashtag walk to bus cancer, hashtag National Breast Center Foundation. And then we challenge you to tag five friends in that post and say, hey, I want you to sign up for the walk to bus cancer. And even if you don't live here, you can do it. Um, you can have a walk wherever you are, register, and um, 
that's one thing. So then we'll have the rest, the wings also in different places in Del Rey. We might have them in parks in Old Town. Um, just a way, you know, we really think that the community all could use something positive to rally around right now. Um, and this is a way to hopefully those businesses that will put a poster in their window, have the wings out there for people to take pictures in front of, it will drive traffic to their stores and businesses as well. Um, That's a great I feel idea. that talking so much, no, but there's well, you have a, we have so it's, it's all wonderful information that everybody is is really drinking up. In fact, Mary Wildland said that the zebra will sponsor needs to sponsor a virtual walk team. So count us in. You're and the I best. Say, yeah. Lynn. Yep. And I say, um, really, um, no, we're getting a lot of a lot of positive love, a lot of love and support, Martha, from everybody watching. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. So some of the other ideas, if I can share them, um, mm -hmm. the walk to bus cancer little car magnets. Hopefully you can see that. Um, we're gonna try to print some of these out and stores that wanna participate could sell these little footprints at checkout. So when people are checking out, they'll say, hey, would you like to spend you know, $5 for the National Breast Center Foundation? And we'll have it so that you can write your name or the name of someone that you're walking in memory of. And then the store would put these all up on their wall and we would probably eventually bring them to the National Breast Center in Old Town and put them all up for everybody. Um, so that's another way to have businesses involved at no big expense for them at all, really. Um, you know, they might want to be involved and say like, hey, the wings are here today, we're selling the footprints. And if you all come in today, we will donate, you know, 10% of our proceeds to the National Breast Center Foundation. So we've gotten a great response working with the Old Town Boutique District, with the Scout Guide, um, with some out, uh, restaurants in Alexandria and some businesses in Del Rey. I think it's something that we could even have a bigger impact um, than we might have had just by holding the walk at Fort Hunt Park. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, the incentive, it's usually very fun to see the, the leaderboard going as people start registering and they try to raise money for the walk. Um, every year the incentive has been that the team that raises the most money or the individual and the individual will carry the banner and lead the walk with Dr. Weintritt. Um, but this year we're working on a couple of really, really great ideas that I probably shouldn't share yet in case they don't come to fruition, but they involve some celebrity chefs and they involve a sommelier in Rome doing a virtual wine tasting. They involve some, some really neat things that I think will incentivize people to uh, want to help get their team in the number one spot to, to be raising the most money and to win those prizes. So um, yeah, that sounds fantastic, Martha. Go big or go home, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> We're doing a team. <laughs> Yay, Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, I'll definitely. I think the zebra might have a couple of teams. So um, that, that, that's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, you do have an amazing committee because these ideas are all so creative and so um, infectious. And so, you know, everybody's going to really be want to be taking part of that. Um, and you can tell the social media, um, you know, it's just, you know, everybody's on social media and it's such an easy thing to do. Um, yeah. And just, you know, everybody benefiting from it is, you know, such a win-win because, you know, any company is going to want to be, any store is going to want to get, get, get involved with you. I hope so. You know, like I said, it's a positive thing for everyone to rally around and um, it doesn't take much to just go on, register and uh, share that link with your friends and family and say, hey, I'm doing this walk. Uh, you know, I've heard from people who were signed up to do the Marine Corps Marathon, which was also supposed to be October 25th. They're going virtual as well. Um, you know, one friend said, hey, we're going to be training anyway, so we'll just dedicate one of our training runs to you. We'll all put on our Walk to Bus Cancer t-shirts and we'll send you a picture or a Facebook Live clip and you can use that on the 25th. Um, you know, and the other thing we plan to do that day when we're not live featuring someone speaking or doing the mindful meditation. Uh, you know, we're hoping to also have bar three that we had last year do a exercise warm up. Ease Yoga did the cool down, the free yoga cool down. Um, you know, there's so many amazing, amazing people in the community who have supported us and who want to be involved in this. Um, but when we're not doing a live 
feed, we're going to try to show some videos of some patient stories, also some sponsor stories. So if you decide, you know, I want to sponsor my business, you can have a few minutes of a video that says, look, I'm doing this because I lost, you know, a really good friend to breast cancer. Um, my store's struggling, but it's important to me to still support these women who can't go get a mammogram or can't get treatment for breast cancer. So um, I've been so humbled by the generosity in this community. It just blows me away. You know, when you put it out there, and I think Nicole and Sandra said that, they put the masks out there in their store, and they're just very, very warmly received. And um, it's an amazing place to live. It really is. Uh, we discover that um, every day when we are uh, interviewing on ZTV Live and we have Alexandria community leaders come on here and business owners, you know, uh, people, people like you three that come on and, um, and it, it, it always uh, reinforces the fact of what a, an amazing community Alexandria really is. So um, I want to thank you, uh, Martha, for coming on. Was there anything final that you wanted to add? I mean, people should stay tuned for more information on the walk and ha figure out how they can get uh, involved and how they can register. And please come back to ZTV Live and, and let us know when you know plans get a little bit more final. Um, Love that. Thank you. And if, yeah, anybody who's interested in the tennis and golf tournament, you can still sign up until I think August 20th. Um, it's swing to bus cancer.org. I know you put the link out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as we get closer, but we're going to start getting a lot more information out to people. So please follow us on our, uh, national breast center foundation, Facebook page and Instagram. And we'll be doing a lot of posting about how to register for the walk how to organize a walk, how to sponsor. And if you're a local store or business that wants to be involved with uh, the footprints or the angel wings, please reach out to me. Excellent. Excellent. I hope everybody got that. Okay, Martha, thank you so much. We'll also be, um, you know, let us know at the zebra here because we're happy to share the, share your good news as well for all of your promotions. Thank you. Yes. And Nicole and Sandra, thank you. What a wonderful story you guys have here at your store. And uh, the mass with a mission. I hope if everybody's interested in that, go go check out the uh, redesign in a day in the Holland Hall Shopping Center, um, and look at the mass with a mission as well as all the other lovely things Nicole has in her shop. So thank you so much for coming on ZTV Live with us tonight and sharing your good news with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Sure Definitely. thing. Okay, guys. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna do it for us tonight. What a what a wonderful what a wonderful show! Uh, all these inspiring women here in Alexandria. I'm really humbled to be uh, in the community with them. And um, speaking of inspiring women, uh, Jane Collins will be back with us tomorrow night, interviewing Helen McElvain of the City of Alexandria Housing Department. And then on Thursday night, uh, Virginia Amos show, and Virginia's guest will be Carrie Geller of Friends of Guest House, another amazing nonprofit organization in Delray. So thank you so much for tuning into ZTV Live tonight. I will um, look for your uh, guesses on the picture. Let me show the picture one more time. Uh, just in case um, you haven't guessed where it is. There it is one last time. Remember to send a private message to the Facebook page to the Zebra uh, private messenger. And then uh, that'll do it for us tonight. Thank you so much, and remember, as much as you can, to be the good news in someone's life.